Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the celebrated podcast that explores your favorite looks in film, television, and fashion history. Through conversations with the fashion world's elite and award-winning hair, makeup, and costume designers on sets around the world, you will see and hear exciting tales from behind the scenes, career origin stories, and tons of advice and tips. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Look Behind the Look, where award season is in full swing. We are talking today about the beautiful looks in Barbie the movie. Uh, The makeup and hair designer of the entire movie is with me today, Ivana Primorak. She's incredible. I have been trying to get her on this show since her show, um, Pistol, was on FX during COVID. Her work in it was extraordinary. And then I reached out to her and she said, I'm on the set of Barbie right now and can't... (laughs) scheduled the interview. So here we are finally talking about Barbie and I'll save Pistol for another talk with her. She called from Croatia. So there is a, there was a time difference mix up. So I only got 20 golden minutes with her, but we definitely got a lot in. I know you've heard a lot about Barbie looks, but she really tells you everything you need to know about what she used on set, the products that she couldn't have made Barbie without, and all kinds of fun stories. So enjoy and give Barbie a rewatch afterward and see if you can spot some of the techniques that she talks about in the podcast. Enjoy. Hey Barbie, can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You can find me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday and so is tomorrow and every day from now until forever. You guys ever think about dying? When my heart breaks. Some things have been happening that might be related. When my world shakes. Cold shower. Ooh. Falling off my roof. Ah! And my heels are on the ground. <gasps> Flat feet! Ah! Hi, everybody. I'm here with Ivana Primorak, and we are talking Barbie today, which is something I've been looking forward to since... I mean, those first look pictures of the rollerblading. <laughs> I um, I just was telling Sydney that I just finished watching it again. And I, I don't know why I do that to myself because it makes me cry every single time. And um, I had to do it, though, to, just so all the images were fresh to me. And I just I want to ask you so many questions, but I'll start with how did you come to Barbie? Were were you, was it from Little Women and working with um, Greta then? Okay. So how did It was. Yes. So I um, was very lucky to to be able to collaborate with Greta on Little Women. And um, we have many filmmakers in in common, uh, particularly the production designer, Sarah Greenwood and Jacqueline uh, Darren, the uh, um, costume designer and many others and um, yes we all kind of agreed uh, very early on about six months before we started principal photography that we will embark on um, getting together a film about Barbie doll and I couldn't really imagine what that could be about and the only thing that kind of kept me very interested was Greta because I couldn't imagine that she would be doing something that's not really really interesting yeah yeah so you had faith in that did was it at the time was was it it was Greta and Margot this is the project that was presented to you okay got yeah. it all right okay so so yes so Barbie so what is your introduction to Barbie tell me how that vision was displayed to you and you know what happened in that meeting in that first meeting um well we um I was lucky to read one of the first drafts and it completely blew me away. I oh. thought, well, I could never have guessed, I could never have guessed that that could be a story uh, like that. Um, it was funny from the beginning. It was, um, you could just never, you could never, ever, ever tell anyone, anyone what it was really about. And I still think it's pretty difficult to describe all the nuances of that story. I agree. Um, 
So it completely blew me away in its in its tenderness and its simplicity and its um, overwhelming um, idea of it being a human story, a story about achieving your personal best and human growth, and 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 story that touches us all. And I just thought, oh my god, this is the fun, the most fun um, project I could ever be on. And then the real problems started, which was trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. So it's so yes, I was thinking that as I was doing this last rewatch it was like, yes, it seems so fun. And you get to talk about the Chanel products that you used and oh my, doing Margot Robbie every day. But let's talk about the nitty gritty about what an achievement this really was with with all of the working pieces was there a warehouse of barbies how many people were working on this and you were you're the hair designer and the makeup designer on this film yeah so yeah. i don't even yeah. understand how you're talking to me right now so just tell me <laughs> how this system all worked um well we started having very exciting zoom meetings every tuesday about six months before we started principal photography and we were very lucky to be able to talk about what we didn't want it to be, um, uh, what That's we think it would be, yeah, and that took that took um, quite a few of the meetings. We could say there were examples of um, looks that we didn't want it to be. We had to relate to the Barbie dolls, the plasticness and uh -huh. the the, the doll-like qualities uh, needed to be achieved, but we also needed to to, to create. Uh, relatable characters mm. so we had to it, it was very very clear from the beginning that every Barbie doll is the most beautiful thing in a child's every child's mind so when you look at a Barbie doll and you don't you know you see all the little plugs of hair right. you know you can see her kind of joints are clumsy but you don't in your child's mind you know we had to divorce ourselves from our uh, grown-up ideas what dolls should be like in mm -hmm. every kid's mind they're almost beautiful and perfect um, um, things and also they can do so many things there's so many versions of them and and then of course the fun thing is that the Kens are just in love with Barbies and they just do beach so that was the fun <laughs> element but Barbies were difficult to define how to make them and um, the whole world needed to become what Greta and the rest of the filmmakers um, sort of coined the a phrase of artificially believable. We had to create the world that was totally artificial, but it had to be authentic, artificially authentic. Okay. So we had to make sure that uh, the Barbies and Kens reflect that. So I started prototyping um, different looks and different things because we had time and I thought well, time is the only thing that would give us um, answers. So I made a lot of prototypes of different hair. Uh, we even prototype different kind of joints and knee joints and kind of oh, elbows and different like creating kind of, them. Mm -hmm. Well, we kind of painting them and making uh -huh. them look visible. Interesting. Um, and that was interesting, and and then just didn't look beautiful. And so what we realized is that individuality is what's incredibly important no two dolls can be alike because everyone's best side should be represented in their dolls wow. um and the plastic doesn't plastic hair is not as beautiful beautiful as real hair so everyone had to have the best complexion everyone had to have the best hair and everyone had to have the best version had to become the best version of themselves and i think that was kind of we realized that the minute we started testing but once we all got together at least at leaves and studios in um england in warner brothers um when the set started to be made um we also agreed on some interesting rules which are like like the scale rules right uh, dream houses dream houses the ceilings are always too low you know barbies are never right. the right size for their cars so they have to be jammed in by their you know, kids that play with them. Right, and right. I remember that clearly. We, yeah, and we kind of observed those rules and they became our rules that we followed in creating the world. And I think that really worked. And I think that was really quite clever. So Definitely. for me, the hair had to be 
more perfect than any other, but also most likable. So it's simple in lots of ways, but wider than every girl, every Barbie's shoulders because every Barbie just has too much hair. Yes. But also quite natural around her face. So you think she's just perfect. And, you know, that's where you, you comb their hair and you play with them too hard and then you cut their hair and then you end up with weird Barbie. So <laughs> the whole of those little nuances that Greta wrote in the film was so fun to try and achieve and 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 put into the movie. And how did you construct Weird Barbie? Did you play with one and and say let's replicate this? Did you land on one that you had sort of already chopped up? Well, it, it luckily uh, Greta wrote the, the beginning of the movie that Greta wrote was uh, I think brilliant because it first of all we saw the first Barbie ever made that Margot became the first Barbie ever created right in the black and white swimsuit right. and then we wrote in Greta wrote in the whole uh, the whole uh, row of Barbies that Mattel actually made so yeah. we dived into the archives very early on and we had chance to recreate the most po- uh, 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 the most uh, popular and the most sold Barbies in Mattel history. Right. So that was really great fun. So we had that made. And so there was totally hair Barbie that I never, ever heard. Oh, totally of hair Barbie. Yes. You've got the longest hair ever. Totally hot. Totally cool. Totally hair Barbie. Comb it out. Add some dip. Gel it. Scrunch it. Now you set. Make it fun. Make Ooh. it now. Hair so long. It's totally fun. You know, awful long, you know, her long hair down to the ground, which we managed to make and recreate, which was great fun. And then so I imagined that that's the Barbie being the most popular one, which I didn't know till we kind of died into the archives. She was one of the most popular Barbies of all times. And I imagined that she was the one that kids chopped up in the end. You know, you trim her hair little by little, little by little. And then she becomes weird Barbie. And... um so we, yeah, it took wow. us a long time to figure out what she should look like. And I'm seeing, course- I'm seeing an origin story of Weird Barbie from Totally Hair, and uh, yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that idea. But that was fun, and of course, Kate McKinnon is so involved with the whole process that you know that was just so much fun, and uh, we 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 had many many different fittings and remade her look. I don't know how many, three or four times till we got to where we got to. Oh. Um, So it wasn't interesting. It was harder than I ever thought because I thought, well, this is easy. But it was always something else. It always looked like something from history, like punk or something from a fashion show from Vivian Westwood or something from Tank Girl or something. It was always something that we can relate to. So it was really quite difficult to find a toy like uh, a toy like uh, idea that looks exactly like what Greta wrote, which is the doll that's been played with too hard. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and tell me about, um, our favorite look of the disco Barbie and, and how that, how much fun that's, I mean, was it fun or was it complete chaos to do the disco dance party? (laughs) Oh my God. That was so much joy. Um, but funny, funny. Yeah. It's a, this is a brilliant question because at one point, that scene was over, I can't remember how many days, but I think it was more than a week. We oh, had wow. to shoot that over a long period of time because there was lots of dancers, lots of angles. You know, it was in a whole cul-de-sac, so we saw the whole world. And at one point, it was in our schedule in first week of shooting. Oh my! And God. I think that was the that was the that was the bit where we all sort of said from costume to sets to everyone to props. Everyone was like, "Okay, we can't do that." And <laughs> very you know helped by uh, our producers and of course Margot and Greta and everyone we moved it to the second week okay. and that was incredibly helpful because then we knew that we had to create this whole world and um, Jacqueline came up with the idea of disco and I mean the Mark Ronson song was you know completely Incredible. epic and I've never still to this day I'm not tired of it um, right right it just, I just had the pleasure of watching the film again in LA a few weeks, a few days ago. And that song is better than ever. 
And so it was going to be gold and white party. And that's when it was going to be, it was going to be 80s. Greta's favorite Barbies yeah. were from the 80s. And it was her favorite era. So I had to kind of, we, obviously we knew what we were doing and we started um, making all the, the hair and everything. And then I came up to a very difficult problem with how am I going to make that hair so big? And when, mm -hmm. when yeah. Barbie Margaret was jumping around, it can't be teased because then that's the 60s or the 70s. Uh -huh. And instead of jumping up and down, it would go flat. And so uh, how do you do it? And then luckily my amazing uh, wig makers who I work with a lot, they said, well, there's this technique in 17th century where they crimp the inside of the hair and you have like a little cushion oh, for inside volume. that keeps that. And that's how all those styles from Portrait of a Lady, of nice. all those films, all those massive styles, that's how they were created. I was like, that's what we need. So they made this whole oh, section wow. with a special technique of the 17th century crimping of hair so that Barbie Marga could have, and all the rest of the Barbies could have this massive hair that could fly around but never go flat. Oh my um, goodness, that's genius. So that was genius, but I never I never knew. I mean, no. how would you know till you have a disco scene? So <laughs> <laughs> I mean it hearkened to the VO5 um commercials from the 80s, yes. you know, the hot oil yes. that I used to boil and put on my hair. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it was those Fantastic. kind of things that we were kind of faced with yes. new ideas and new discoveries, all based on um on on kind of having to achieve the differences and the ages and and you know and Greta and Margot's visual uh references are so kind of amazing and so we thought well we have to push it we have to make it be what it needs to be because as she's dancing I can't stop and re-tease her hair every yeah, minute because yeah. it's just never gonna I never you know I, I didn't at one point I didn't even know there was a dance like that you know it all happened at the same time <laughs> so the choreography we never saw the choreography till the rehearsal day you know so it was a total collaboration of 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 everyone you know in that yes. sense because we were all it was the first to, for all of us oh my goodness and then tell me about Ken's abs and was this a chest plate <laughs> or was it airbrush and I mean that's this is our first reveal of his abs really in this party oh yeah exactly I mean that is all Ken Ryan because I can't imagine anyone else being a Ken than Ryan, I have to say. Uh, but he didn't, he, you know, he, he arrived as a normal human being, but his <laughs> will and wish to become uh, this doll who mm. was so hilariously funny um, was incredible. And we did, we had lots of fittings and lots of ideas and, and a lot of it was his idea and his input. And, he did, you know, put an extra mile in the gym to create that, those abs. And then, yes, oh. there were, you know, it was him. It was all him. I love it. And it was incredible. But also with, with you know, the makeup and accentuate and everything, of course, it was even better. But he put all that work in. He would go to the gym at the weekend. He would go to gym before work. All that work went into that character and he was this funny doll. And I just love that because we approached this material like it was a Shakespearean piece, right. you know, with all his rules, with it's all this kind of like a period piece of any kind. And the dedication to achieving all of this was the same as you might think of a, um, for the most serious piece you can imagine. Um, right, right. And I think that's why it was so successful because, yeah. you know, Margot was producing, she was in the gym again, learning her dance every morning before coming to work and then sitting in a chair, working on her computer. She would only have time to glance up and choose her lipsticks and her, mm. you know, finished finished article. Everyone was just so hard at work, plugging it, trying to kind of achieve what we hoped was going to work. <laughs> right, right, right. I also read that you used, instead of contour, you used highlight to shape Ken and um, Margot, I was really looking at that in this last viewing of it. And can you can you explain that technique a little bit about, you know, for myself when I want to be Barbie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of using highlight rather than the shadowing and the contour. Yeah. I mean, we so by deciding what uh, skin tone 
fit each Barbie and each Ken was part of the discovery of individuality, celebrating individuality rather than everyone mm -hmm. having to be suntanned. Uh, Ken I Ryan. I love that. Yeah. And I mean, I, at one point I thought we're going to have to have a, 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 a skin tone that's the same for most people. Um, but that's absolutely is not right because what's most beautiful is individuality. And, you know, and the real Mattel dolls came in very, in, in quite a few different hair colors and quite a few different. Definitely. Uh, so that rang true. So Ken Ryan was suntanned because he does beach, but everyone else had to have a slightly different, what suits them best. So there was not one skin tone. So once we discovered what skin tone fits each person best, we made custom made the body makeup. Oh, wow. because because the, the body makeup couldn't come off during all those. I mean, it was always sunny yeah. in Barbie Land, so it was hot. So the body makeup couldn't come off on any clothes, and the clothes were always pastel. So then the face makeup was fitted, was obviously matched to the body makeup that fitted the best to each person. So then you had a kind of a uniformed um, look, and to create the pleasing and most beautiful face, I thought by shaping the face with highlight would create the shadow on its own of the skin tone that we created underneath. So sculpting the face with cleaning under the eyes, um, creating kind of darker sections around the edges of the hair and the kind of uh, pink tones that would go into the hair would create a nice halo, halo to the face and complement the blush and the glow. Yes. Um, and so the cleaning the, the underneath the eyes, sculpting around the lips mm -hmm. and highlighting the jawline, I, we wanted to, I wanted to create kind of an old movie Hollywood beauty uh -huh. effect rather than contouring, which is pretty modern now. Um, and yes. I think I wanted it to be. So the contour became the, the darkest color on the face, which was kind of the face color and the body color yes. and everything else on top was highlighted to create the shape that suits each person best and then the pink tones and the peachy tones of the kind of glow with the kind of the shimmering glow of the highlight was applied all around the face and the cheeks oh. um, and then each Barbie and Ken could choose their lip color we had we tested many many lip colors and we had kind of the whole shop as I called it the shop of lip colors and everyone 48 and 48 is that the right number yeah yeah <laughs> and it, it was all out in, like in the shop and people could just go and, and pick whatever they thought it was and I thought that was fun because it was like diving into your own box yes and picking what so it became fun um process that everyone could pick their own shade for each costume whatever they you know then some Barbie Emma had freckles so she I noticed that yeah freckles. And and I noticed I them thought, more in, in real world. Um, Margot yes. had her were those her yes. were those put there or does she have freckles? I wasn't sure. I think Mar I think Margot. Yeah, I think we I think we applied some freckles yeah. as well to make uh, you know more kind of uh, glowy and right right. Uh, yeah, so we we played with those kind of uh, things to also help contour the face and make it more cute and doll like and you know, more fashion as well at the same time, because I quite like the fashion of painted on freckles. Yes, yes. And I know Chanel was a dear friend of the production because of Margot's relationship with Chanel, of course. But I, I also saw my friend Lisa Eldridge sneak into the lipstick choices there. And so I just wanted to give that that her velvet lipstick, velvet ribbon lipsticks are amazing. Yes. Um, and what were some of your favorite products that you just couldn't live without on set from from Chanel? Um, well, Chanel had, I would say, what made Barbie Margot Barbie Margot was the Chanel pencil, uh, pink pencil, uh, which was a highlighter for the corners of her eye. Oh. So there's a special, I will actually have a look at the uh, proper name of the product so I can yeah. uh, tell you, but it's a, it's, a, it's a special highlighting pen by Chanel. Uh, and that was always in the corners of her uh, eye to create, yeah, just in okay. there, just to create the kind of a dazzle um, effect. Um, the cream cheek and lip uh, tints in, in a little, in that pot. we, in a pot, we used every single one, mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. color that um, they made for different outfits. 
um, from orange to red and the pink, we used all of them. And that became um, very, um, and also we used the cream, uh, little tubes, cream eyeshadows by Chanel. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and they're quite sparkly um, and pink. So that was the staple that was on every single day for Barbie Mago's look. It was never too much. I mean, it was just perfect. I love this idea of it being like realistic. And that's what really got to our hearts, right? Because they did seem like real people. And I just, before I let you go, I could talk to you for two hours. I apologize (laughs) for all these questions, but I'm so excited to have you. I wanted to ask your Barbie story. What was your relationship to Barbie growing up? Did you have Well, I... Yes, I had very many. And um, my grandmother made uh, clothes for dolls. Oh, that was wow. her That was her uh, hobby. Thing. And yeah. so my Barbie's always had, um, she would make a little box with tissue and she would make all the different outfits for my Barbie dolls. And they always did end up in the splits at the corner of the <laughs> room with their hair chopped off with Sharpie makeup on. And uh, and then grandma would buy me more. And so oh. Barbie was, yeah, I was a huge Barbie fan and I played with Barbies a lot. So yeah, this film was- Dream come true. Dream come true. I, my, my bragging rights are that I, I did have the original and I still do the original Alan doll. So I was very oh. happy, very happy to see him in this film because everyone, no I one knows Alan. Alan. <laughs> yeah. And he was one of my favorite characters to, so to build. It was so good. <laughs> I'm sure. And, and how did you come to that, that wig? Was it, was it a, it was not plastic. It was not. No, it wasn't plastic, but it wasn't plastic because no one else had plastic hair. So I thought, well, let's do something that looks Almost like a helmet plastic, yeah. but it is also quite realistic. So, um, so we came uh, together at that kind of uh, solution. But it had to be red. He had to have red eyebrows. Oh. He had to have red around his eyes and the brown freckles and the whole. He's just such a brilliant character. Love, brilliant. love, love, yeah. Love. Love, well, Alan. I must let you go um, for this time re- reluctantly, but I do want to have you back because. We still need to talk about Pistol, which was my favorite work of yours during COVID. And like, I loved that show so much and I, I would loved love your to. work in it. So, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to do that one finally, that interview. I and would I, absolutely love to. Anytime. Oh, thanks, Ivana. I am so, so happy to speak to you and congratulations on all the awards talk. It's, thank it's, you so it's, much. Well thank deserved. you. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok. Produced by Jace Bartok, edited by Evan Rivard. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look. <laughs>